Hello there, welcome back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry, and I am here to answer all of those burning questions you have about me personally, business wise, whatever. I asked you to leave me some questions on Monday's quilt chat video, and you did not disappoint. You sent me some interesting questions and I'm going to try to answer as many as I can. have no idea how long this video is going to be or if I'll get through all the questions or if we'll come up a little short. I don't know. We'll just have to see how it turns out. Uh, I had a couple from Facebook and a few from uh, the video and I come up with, uh, well, you guys came up with 15 questions. So some of them have very short answers and some of them have more involved answers. So I hope this will prove to be interesting and you'll have a little more insight into my, my quilty life. All right, so first of all, let's do the uh, two from the Facebook group. I got two from there. And some of them are just quilt related questions. Some of them are personal to me. Some of them are just general questions you have about sewing or, you know, anything in this uh, genre that I represent here. So I'm just going to start from the top. I have, have them all uh, printed out here so that I can uh, see exactly what you asked and try to give you an accurate and honest answer on all of them. I promise I'll be honest. <laughs> okay, the first one was from Marcella and she has a quilt related question. Her question is, how can I sell my quilt books? And she expressed that she can get so many free patterns now, she doesn't really need her quilt books anymore. So what's a good way to get some of your investment back on some of those books? It's, it's difficult. Uh, yard sales is not going to bring you anything and of course donating them is a, a nice gesture but what if you have so much money invested that you just can't donate them but you need to get a little something back for it so that you can continue to buy fabric and and make these things we love to make um, I thought about this for a while and maybe some of you out there could uh, help answer this too um, I have found books that I've been looking for specifically most successfully on eBay. So if it's something that's not uh, in print anymore and somebody just happens to have one and wants to sell it, I can usually find it on eBay. So that might be a good place for you to start. Uh, it's very easy to sell on eBay. You just sign up and and take some pictures and put a description out there and, and wait and see what happens. Um, it's worth a try. I mean, they're sitting on the shelf anyway, so let them sit there a little longer until they finally do sell for something. So a good thing to do too is to try to find a, a similar book or the identical book uh, on eBay and um, maybe make your price just a, a few cents less or a dollar less or something like that, you might have a little more success. Or you could put it up as an auction and start it out as a penny or whatever your lowest price would be for it and see what happens. Uh, it's a lot of fun to buy and sell on eBay. So uh, that's, that's what I would recommend and that's probably what I would most likely do if I was gonna sell some of my quilting books. But you are correct. If you go out to any uh, fabric company out there to their website, almost any, especially the major ones, there's hundreds and hundreds of free patterns. And sometimes you get a bundle of fabric and you don't know exactly what to do with it. Look up that exact fabric and sometimes you'll, uh, you'll see a pattern, a free pattern pop up for it. So uh, there's a lot of good resources online there now for uh, quilt patterns. The next one is from Brenda and she asked me if my windmill garden quilt is at the long armor. And I should have searched a little bit before I started, I meant to. I don't think that's one of the ones that I sent over. And I believe the reason why is because I never could decide or felt like I had the correct fabric to put a border on it. 
Uh, I did put a another like two or three inch border of the background that I used all the way around, but I wanted to put another border. And I think at one point also, I was just kind of perplexed as to, do I want another border? So it's over there in the to be determined pile. <laughs> I do still have several quilt tops that need to go. So uh, Mary is going to be starting on another one of my quilts soon that you will see. And uh, we'll just get through, the, through those first eight or so. And uh, then I'll start sending her some more. <laughs> and uh, sooner or later, you will see that windmill garden quilt finished. I promise. <laughs> okay, those are the two from the Facebook group. Uh, the rest are from the YouTube. Uh, Monday's quilt chat, as I mentioned, I asked you to put your questions down there and uh, I would consider all of your questions and answer them today on this video. So a very cool question that Letha uh, asked me was, what is the biggest lesson that you've learned in your quilting to this point? And then she goes on to explain what she means. Is it a philosophy you have developed or decided to ignore, or a skill set you've gained, or even something as simple as a new way of pressing blocks, or a better tool or ruler? What has made the biggest impact? Well, when you're a new quilter or you're just starting to sew, you learn a lot of really big lessons then. And going back to when I was a teenager or earlier even, what I learned was that was probably the most impactful lesson was pressing. Uh, pressing seams open, pressing well your fabric before you begin your project and all during your project. I think that was the biggest and most valuable lesson that uh, I learned early, early on. Now in more recent times, um, and I think I've mentioned this before, I'm gonna say rulers. Um, some of you probably remember how I expressed wanting to switch my rulers out to the Quilter Select brand, and I did that. Uh, I still have all of my old rulers. I'm not using them anymore. And I'm finding that my Quilter Select rulers has helped me tremendously. The line is nice and sharp and easy to see. And I feel like my accuracy is way better than it was. It wasn't terrible before, but it's way better than it was. I can, I can tell just in these last few months that I switched to those rulers. Not an advocate for Quilter Select in a... A profitable sort of way they're not sponsoring me to say that or anything but uh, that's just what I you know I bought them with my own money and I I love them and and they're making a huge difference in my accuracy and quilting you have to have accuracy that's the difference really between regular sewing and quilting regular sewing yes you have to be accurate but you can fudge a little bit you know when you're uh, doing a waistband or an armhole or something like that you can just kind of move around and make it fit but quilting you've got squares and rectangles and triangles and all these angles and and they have to be right and if they're not at the end of the project you're gonna have some fabric left over on one end of a row or another <laughs> and that still happens to me sometimes uh, you know I'm not beyond making mistakes I definitely make mistakes but those rulers have been a game changer I think and I think the lesson learned is is to probably do some research first and listen to your peers and what they're saying and and try to get the best tools out there that you can afford to buy okay Patricia asks, where do you live and do you have children? Well, I live in Jeffersonville, Indiana. And if you're familiar with Indiana and Kentucky, uh, the Ohio River runs between them, kind of running southwest from Ohio. And uh, Jeffersonville is directly across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. So most people have heard of Louisville, Kentucky because of the Kentucky Derby and other things that they have there, the, the uh, UofL and, and uh, the sports teams. 
but that's where I live and I have lived here in this location for about six years. I've lived in Jeffersonville for probably about 19, 20 years. And then before that, I lived in Georgetown, Indiana. And before that, I lived in Corridon, Indiana, which is the first state capital of Indiana. That was the first one before Indianapolis became the state capital. And uh, it's a quaint little town, lots of history there. And I, I lived and worked there for many, many years. And before that, uh, my original roots are from uh, Southeast Kentucky. So my um, relatives are all from that area. And then do I have children? No, I do not have children. I just have a fur baby, Blue. If you've seen my doggie, you know who I'm talking about. Sherry asks, how is your Nash? Nash, Nash is a, what do they call that? An anagram for acronym for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. And many of you have probably heard of fatty liver disease. It's very common. A lot of people have it. NASH is just a little bit more advanced than fatty liver disease, uh, which means that I do have a little bit of damage on my liver from it. And it is um, caused by a bad diet and more importantly than anything, sugar. Sugar is the enemy. So <laughs> anything uh, refined that way or any processed foods that contain sugar uh, is killing our livers and it's becoming almost an epidemic. So uh, have your doctor check your blood work for high liver enzymes. That's how it was detected in my case. And um, over the last year, I've had some help with it uh, through a gastroenterologist and also a, a dietitian, a nutritionist, um, those types of doctors and, and professionals. Uh, I was on the Mediterranean diet for a while and I liked that diet. Uh, it did help me tremendously with those levels and got them back in normal ranges. And, um, the weight loss that they wanted me to have didn't quite happen. Um, now I'm on the carnivore diet by choice, by my own personal choice. I'm no longer under the uh, direction of a nutritionist or a dietitian. So I'm just kind of went on my own on that. And the reason why is because I am a person who cannot moderate so <laughs> if you're a person that has a lot of cravings, like bad cravings, sugar cravings, snacky cravings, and then maybe you think, well, I'm just gonna have that. Well, instead of taking a few out of the bag, you eat the entire bag, that's, that's me. And I know that's you know common for people to do that, but it is a, a problem with not being able to moderate. So you have to get rid of those cravings. And the carnivore diet is it has been proven to get rid of cravings and it does work. It really does work. It doesn't mean that you don't get hungry. You do get hungry if you're limiting your calories, but really carnivore diet is, is not a calorie limited diet. And there's an all, there's also a lot of other benefits from it, like uh, mental clarity, um, help with uh, depression and other mental disorders, uh, anxiety, um, it helps with uh, a lot of things. And it is one of those diets that can cause your cholesterol to go up, but you must remember that it's important to check all levels and the condition of the cholesterol that's running through your body. Because just because you have a high cholesterol number does not mean that you are going to plaque up your arteries. <laughs> so, um, you can talk to your doctor about that and, and, and get a lot more information. But right now, my NASH is under control and my diet is under control and I've started to actually lose some weight again slowly and I'm, I'm feeling a lot better about it. So you guys out there that think you might have that, get yourself tested and get yourself well. 
Carol says, you mention a lot of online shops. Do you have local small shops other than Joann's, Hobby Lobby, or Michael's? Very good question. Yes, I do mention a lot of online shops simply for the convenience of it. Um, yeah, and you can find things on sale if you look. Um, you don't have to leave the house. <laughs> you don't have to get ready and leave the house and, and go searching for something and maybe not find it, and, but you can sit on your couch or in your sewing room, on your desk, whatever, and just typey typey and find what you're looking for, usually. Uh, interesting that you mentioned Joann's, Hobby Lobby, and Michael's in my town. They are all about a mile apart from each other. Well, actually, now, Joann's and Michael's are right across the street from each other, and Hobby Lobby is probably, probably less than a mile from them. So, I rarely go in those stores, honestly. I rarely go in them, but I'm not beyond shopping at all of those places. I also have a, um, it's one of those sew and vac authority stores in the next town, which is just minutes away. Uh, I have gone in there. They sell sewing machines, long arms, and have a selection of fabric, but they don't have a lot. And usually from one time to the next that I'm going in there, it's the same stuff. They might only buy like a line and it sits there for a long time. And then they buy a line and it sits there for a long time. So, you know, their specialty is not fabric selling. It's just, you know, something they've got in there because they're selling sewing machines and long arms. So they have a lot of, um, well, they have embroidery machines too. So they have a lot of notions related to that. So, uh, I think I did buy one of my Quilter Select rulers in there, my smaller one. And then if I go over to Louisville, there are a couple of shops over there. Um, one in particular that I go to has a very nice selection of fabric and they have a half price clearance on Wednesday. So, I've been known to go over there ever so often on a Wednesday and get some half price fabric. So, uh, yeah, support your local quilt shop if you have one, but I have, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I, I have nothing against shopping wherever I want to shop, and I don't have any problem with you shopping wherever you want to shop. So, good question, Carol. Okay, so Dolores and Tracy had basically the same question, so I'm going to answer both of you with, with one answer. The answer is, am I retired? Well, I'm not old enough to be retired in the Social Security getting sense. I'm um, 59 years old. I just turned 59 years old. Uh, I haven't worked a an outside job since November of 2020. Um, the other question was, what was my profession? So, if you want to get the whole history, I'll try to get it in a nutshell here for you. Um, I would say my first real job, I worked at Hancock Fabrics, and I worked there for about four years. And I worked there as a clerk, and then as an assistant manager, and then kind of as a co-manager as well. So um, that's kind of where I got my in-depth fabric knowledge of, you know, just all the stuff we use. I have some familiarity with all of it not an expert in anything, <laughs> but uh, that was my first, I'll say, real job with benefits. And then um, after that, I went to work at a local bank. It was actually a savings and loan association, which those don't really exist anymore. And later it did become a, uh, a savings bank. So I worked there for 14 years. I started as a teller and I just kept working up into other positions in the bank uh, during that time. Uh, when I left there, I was the um, vice president of retail sales. So um, I was in charge of the main office teller line and customer service area. And then I was also over the basic workings of two other branches. One was a standalone branch and one was a grocery store branch. And then uh, I decided that I wanted to chase a little dream after that. <laughs> I had always wanted to go to beauty school and do something 
in that profession. I was 37 years old at the time, so, you know, getting late to start chasing dreams, but it, there was still time. So <laughs> uh, I wanted a, a quick um, schooling on something. I didn't want to go for the full cosmetology, but uh, I took a nail technician uh, course uh, full time for about three months and got all of my hours in to be able to get my Indiana license and be a professional nail technician. So I did that for from 2001 until, well, November of 2020. I was working at a salon when I decided to stop working. Uh, when the second wave of COVID came, that's when I decided, you know what, this, this just isn't worth it. Um, during that whole time, I worked part-time. I kind of set my own hours. I even had my own nail salon at one point for about five years. Um, yeah, and then, you know, my mother got sick and I was helping her with her um, doctor's appointments and things and you know life just kind of got complicated and I, I left it for a while just a few months and then uh, I got in with a, a local salon uh, after that and I was at that last salon for five years so in the meantime from November of 2020 to until I would say December of 2021 I was retired <laughs> I was not making any income but uh, then I started messing around with YouTube and I've been doing that ever since so it is a little job that pays a little bit so it helps it mainly fuels my quilting habit basically <laughs> so um, yeah that's 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 the lowdown on on where I've been and where I'm going currently. Lori asked if I know anything about the Grace Company's Little Cutie Frame, which you can use with the Jazz 2, which the Baby Lock Jazz 2, which is what I have, has that deep 12 inch um, throat plate. Um, you can get the Cutie Frame, it sits on a table, or you can actually, I think you can actually get a table from them for it to sit on. And it's kind of like a mini uh, long arm rail system. Uh, it does have a, a carrier on it um, for your machine. I don't have any personal uh, experience with it. I have looked into it. I have seen a lot of videos on it. Um, for me, I'm not interested in that. I see that uh, a lot of people seem to finally go to a long arm, even if it's an ex inexpensive one. So I don't want to start that low on the chain and then jump to getting a long arm. I would just rather go straight to a long arm if I could. Um, I don't know when that'll be, but I don't know. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> That's my opinion. You you do you. You can you can certainly. I, I see some wonderful videos out there of people using it, but I don't. You know, video of ten minutes is not going to tell you the ins and outs of what that is really. It looks a little troublesome to me. Like it would have problems. Annette asks, how many craft swaps with Lisa Marie have I participated in? One. I've only participated in the scavenger hunt. I would like to do another one and I'll just see what she comes up with. I think there's one coming out in September and I'll see what that is and I might participate in it again. I like the scavenger hunt. It's very nice. Uh, very much uh, a fun swap to do. And Doe asks, is my hair naturally that pretty silver? Do I use a toner? <laughs> well, uh, a toner is a professional beauty product that is used by beauticians or hairstylists to counteract yellow in the hair. I have had that done before. Uh, I don't get my hair cut very often. But uh, once in a while, my girl, she'll say, you have a little bit of, of yellowness back here. It's always like right back here. And she'll say, I can put a toner on that for you if you want. And she'll just put that on there and let me kind of lay back in the sink for a while. But I've, I've, honestly, I think I've only had her do that one time. And then 
every once in a while here with our water system seems like something will spit out and it's kind of coppery colored and I can tell like it'll make that same area kind of a pink and so when I see that happen I use my um, purple shampoo and I don't use the purple shampoo but maybe once a month just to kind of keep everything bright but uh, I don't add any kind of professional products to it to make it the color it is. It, it is the color that it is. It is dark underneath all the way around. It's pretty dark, but the outer portions are, are pretty light. So I'm happy about that. I worried that it would you know come out to be one of those yellow shades but there's a remedy for everything so you know if if you're wanting to grow your hair out natural and you're afraid of what you're going to get well there are things to fix what you get if you don't like it so please do it it's very liberating frida asks while sewing what do i listen to or watch well, you all have probably seen this television over here, and it isn't worth a dime. It will not, it's got an a antenna to it, but it will not pick up but one channel, and it's not anything I want to watch. So, uh, and it's not a smart TV either, so I can't hook my, my iPad to it for YouTube. So I usually am listening to my iPad. I listen to um, other quilting channels like... Um, uh, just get it done quilts, uh, power tools with thread. Um, I listen to um, stitch roadies, not stitch roadies, quilt roadies. Leah Day sometimes. She's, she's got a real nice voice and she's talking a lot about uh, free motion quilting and things like that. Even though I don't do a whole lot of that, I, I like to listen to her because she's very easy to listen to and she's she's very much a teacher so um, that's what I listen to I rarely listen to music um, sometimes I'll listen to um, uh, Christian uh, publications the Bible things like that I uh, have to be in a certain frame of mind to do that, but a lot of times I come out here and, and I don't turn on anything, and I just kind of, you know, cleanse my mind and just do my thing. Brenda also asked here, when did we start going places by travel trailer, and what places and people have we seen and have uh, left a nice memory? So we got a small Geo Pro camper back in 2019 and we took it a lot of places nearby uh, we probably went as far as maybe three hours away we didn't travel lengthy distances uh, reason being is that our tow vehicle was a little little weak on the towing so we didn't want to put ourselves in a precarious situation with with that so we didn't go hugely far away now last year we got our grand designs reflection and we went um, t out west to visit um, Las Vegas and Henderson where my sister lives and I went to the retreat out there that was in February yes um, that was an adventure <laughs> and you know I don't know if you some of you have would you know have been along with me on that journey <laughs> with the videos but some of you are new but um, we have not actually been able to go very much this year um, the last time we went was for one of our uh, Bible conventions and that was in Evansville which is a couple hours away from here and um, since my husband's mother has been not well uh, he hasn't felt okay with going long distances so our travels are, are kind of more recent and we still have lots of places to go and people to meet so um, 
that's that's all I have for you on that. I don't have anything <laughs> really awesome to re to relate, but I really enjoyed my trip out west. Um, you know, we saw some things out there that were, uh, you know, thrilling to see, and um, I w would definitely love to travel some more, and we will. Diane asks, do I have any sew alongs planned? And she mentioned that she was needing some ideas for panels. And yes, someone else mentioned something about panels and wanting to learn how to uh, add on to panels. And that is going to be in the near future. Uh, I've been looking up some uh, information uh, and some ideas and some inspiration on, on that. And uh, just hang in there with me. I'll get to it. Uh, it should be pretty soon. I have uh, a commission job to do that involves a panel. So uh, you'll be seeing that for sure. And then I have some other projects that I want to do with panels as well. And uh, yeah. Do I have a sew along planned? I don't have like a, like one I make where I'm making up the blocks. Uh, I mentioned the other day about that, that 60s uh, foundation paper piecing blocks. I might do something with that um, probably in October-ish at the earliest. Um, I'll just have to think about it some more. I'd like to do some more sew-alongs. I will have some more sew-alongs. I just don't have anything in the queue with a date set on it yet, but I have lots of things in the queue. Uh, Ms. Topaz. Hi, Ms. Topaz. Nice to hear from you. She was at the retreat with me in February and in last October, too. Says, what are the dimensions of your she shed? <sighs> I didn't measure it, but I'm pretty sure it's 12 by 16 in here. So <laughs> the shed itself is bigger than that because there's another section separate that you get to from outside that's like a potting shed and it has like uh, you know where you can do your seeds uh, for gardening and you keep your garden tools things like that it's not big enough let's just say that <laughs> so you might compare it to like a large uh, bedroom in your house karen says what inspired you to start quilting well I don't know what inspired me to start quilting. I know my mother did some sewing. She didn't do quilting very much that I can recall. Um, but, you know, she sewed some clothes for us. I remember she sewed me some things when I was like, I don't know, three to five years old that I can remember. Um, I know that I did take some old clothing uh, that was in a closet that no one was wearing anymore and I cut it into squares and I even had the presence of mind to what do you call that fussy cut uh, one of my brother's shirts had this like paisley thing on it and on the back it had this thing this conglomeration of flowers or something I remember it was kind of blue and yellow and uh, I fussy cutted those flowers out for some of the squares, but I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, I put uh, a piece of a blanket inside of it. And then the back of it was a piece of white flannel. I don't have no idea where I got white flannel, but uh, I did put that little child size quilt together and uh, tied it. And I do remember asking my mother, you know, how to do it. And she says, oh, you tie it. And she says, you just take embroidery thread or yarn and you, you tie it. So she told, showed me what she meant by that, which is just what she said. You tie it. Uh, and and I, I still have that. I still have that little blanket now. It, it's ugly, but I made it. I was a kid when I made it. So I don't know, I guess seeing my mom so inspired me and then when I got into junior high school uh, there was home ec classes home ec class home ec classes started in the seventh grade and we learned to cook and we learned to sew and that's just really when I, I fell in love with sewing 
and most of my sewing from that point up wasn't all that much crafts it was clothing and so I didn't get back to quilting until it was when I started being a nail tech like uh, 2000 it was 2007 that I bought my Janome quilters companion machine and started started doing more quilting so um, yeah I guess my mother inspired me I don't know maybe it's just in my blood uh, she also says why don't you celebrate holidays well many of you know that I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses and we don't celebrate holidays we don't mind if other people celebrate holidays we just don't celebrate holidays so we are very um, uh, peacemaking people and uh, you know we try to get along with everyone and you know people can believe whatever they want to believe and their worship is their business and we like to be treated the same way so uh, we're kind of purist when it comes to uh, what, what we believe uh, directly from the Bible and we just don't mix in some of the the national and local and world customs that are, are popular and that's that's all it is if you ever want to know more about Jehovah's Witnesses go to our website at jw.org jw.org and any question you have about us will, will be answered on that website so I encourage you to go look it up okay let's see is there anything else oh hey that's it we got through it I wonder how long this video is let me look Oh, I can't see it. <laughs> we'll just have to see. Uh, if it's too long, I might get edited down. So get ready for a little bit of choppiness. <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed that and learned a little bit more about me. And we'll do this again in the future as we get new um, subscribers, new viewers. People who don't know all these details will, will want to know. So much later on, we'll, we'll take this up again and take up some questions and, and hear the answers again. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so now. And uh, I ask you to look and see if there's anywhere on your screen the word subscribe. And even though you think you may be subscribed, uh, hit that button anyway because unfortunately YouTube does get rid of subscriptions sometimes uh, it's kind of a mysterious thing that they do nobody really knows why they do it or what the criteria is for them doing it so just check that and if you like what you saw here today and you like quilting and sewing and want to uh, see what I have in store in future videos click that subscribe button and then also hit the bell that says all and we will see you back here on Finish It Friday. Have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye.